Hey guys, uh, this is the Crypto Anarchist uh, here again. I just wanted to give you guys a quick vis visualization of uh, the way that you would actually want to build a blockchain um, version of Twitter. And the reason why I wanted to give you guys this visualization is I made a couple of mistakes in my video. Um, the main mistake was uh, I didn't include in my censorship version of Twitter any way to ensure that if the Twitter like completely blocked someone from posting or deleted all of their tweets like that they, they would still need access to their tweets and the way that you would actually probably want to do this is just have them store those tweets on their own home computer um, again the costs of doing this are far less than the costs of posting on memo as of right now but obviously if you have your own posts uh, stored on your own computer then you're completely um, protected against censorship resistance uh, in a very easy way because obviously you can store a lot of text data and it doesn't take up much space on your computer whatsoever so um, the one thing you guys got to remember is that we're using Merkle trees here again so um, the only difference in what I said from yesterday from uh, what I'm saying today is that uh, before you uh, hash all these things um, they're stored on your individual computer so each individual user will have uh, all their posts from the beginning of time uh, all stored on their computer and they can change the settings like again I'm never saying like keep settings in one one way or another but they can change the settings and be like hey maybe I only want to keep uh, all my tweets from the last year or maybe the last five years I don't know it depends on whatever they want but uh, anyways uh, so they so they act, they store the uh, the tweets on their own computer. Um, the next thing that they, that that they do after they store their tweets is they're going to hash their tweets and they're going to store the hashes of these tweets as well because this is necessary for proving censorship resistance. But so let's say we have this user Terry here. So we have Terry's posts A through H, um, and so you hash each one of Terry's posts and that gives you the uh, second. Uh, level right there where you have hashes of his posts A through H. Once you have a hash of each individual post you combine the hashes together so from hash A and hash B you get hash AB from hash C and hash D you get hash CD from hash A and hash or from hash AB and hash CD that'll combine and you'll get hash ABCD and you'll finally end up once you've combined all the hashes together with hash ABCDEFG or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I'm sorry. But again, so this is how the censorship re resistance is proved. Uh, the only thing that uh, Terry's going to do here is he's only going to put that uh, final Merkle root hash, that hash A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, he's going to put that on the blockchain, okay? Instead of putting each one of these individual things on the blockchain, all he puts is that root hash. And the reason why is because now he's just put proof of all of those posts um, that he's done over the month, the, the the proof of those posts is on the blockchain, but he's done it in far fewer bytes because, again, if any one of those posts is changed, like let's say they change Terry's post uh, number D, uh, if they change that to Q, then uh, instead of having hash A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H uh, at the end, you're going to have hash A, B, C, Q, EFGH. Okay, so obviously that changes it and that makes it much easier for everybody to look at because, again, um, if you're a user and you want to prove that Harry hasn't been censored, like maybe you're saying you're going to look at post number E, um, and let's say you're, you're, you've only seen Terry's post E, but you want to make sure he hasn't been censored to make sure you, nothing ever, you know, you want to make sure that it's, uh, his account is his account's integrity is still intact, right? So you're looking at Terry's post E, and so you want to check to make sure Terry's never been censored. So you hash post E, and then uh, you, your uh, the application will call up care, or Terry's node, and um, you will ask against his uh, hash at E, or, or you'll you'll ask for his hash F, so that you can combine the hash of E with hash F. You'll ask for the hash of G of H, because then you'll combine hash E F with G H. And then you'll ask for hash A, B, C, D. And then you'll see whether or not those hashes that you get together will form the final uh, complete hash. And I know a lot of people will say, what happens if Terry's node is offline? What will happen if Terry's node is offline? Is he'll just have a request for that information once he comes back online. So this, is, this won't be an instant checking thing. Um, and the only reason why I say that is because you don't want to like force every user to be online all the time. But you just want everyone to be able to check to make sure if you know whether or not they've been censored. Um, and you can do this directly from that application just when you log on 
like that means the application will run and it'll check you, the censorship resistance that you've had and again one thing that you might want to have to include on this is you might actually have to include a transaction fee if someone checks the censorship resistance of somebody else just because that means that person's computer then has to send them some information so you don't want them to get spammed with it I don't know the best way to actually do this I guess I don't know you want to make sure you just want to make sure the, the number of uh, resources that the computer uses is minimal so I don't know the best way to make sure that you know people just don't aren't spamming requests to prove that something hasn't been censored and I don't know if that would actually be a, an issue I really don't I really don't but uh, then going beyond that beyond each individual user how they have their own individual Merkle roots uh, like we said we used the an example before and we used uh, I think we called him Tim. We used a guy who started, whose name started with a T. Well, in this one, let's assume that uh, this uh, this is all of our users. Let's say the site only has eight users right now. We have Alice, Bob, Carol, Dave, Evelyn, Frank, Greg, and Henry. So um, each one of these users, again, they all have that root hash, and that root hash is that second level there. It's just so Alice puts the root hash, which is hash of Alice, or and then Bob got the hash B, hash C is Carol, hash D is Dave, hash E is Evelyn, hash F is Frank, hash G is Greg, and hash H is Jen or Henry. And so you, again, with it, with these individual root hashes, you uh, hash those all together so that you can uh, come, come up with one final hash, which is the hash of all users' tweets all together. And so that's hash of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So again, if any of the tweets from anybody, from Alice to Bob, or let's say it's Evelyn, doesn't matter, if a single tweet was changed by anybody, then you know in that final root hash, okay? And so that's the crazy thing about this. So if you were checking some individual person's posts, again, let's look at this uh, image from Peter Risen's talk the other day. Uh, you can check through billions and billions of posts and it doesn't take very many bytes to prove the legitimacy of the whole thing okay that's the crazy thing about the way Merkle roots work so there's an insane amount of scaling that you can do and <clears throat> as you scale you can prove censorship resistance for everybody in a super simple super easy to prove way and the fine and again the final thing that you just have to combine it with is you have to store individuals posts and hashes and the root hashes on their individual computer or on that individual's application like it's stored to their computer but through the application and the reason that you do this is then uh, they can prove the legitimacy of their data and they can ensure that they can't get censored if it's actually stored on their own computer you know so there's no way that the site can stop them from saying what they want to say so you get complete censorship resistance and I think that's a great thing so Again, this is the final fully-fledged version of that idea. I want to thank the people who commented on the video before. Um, the one reason why I try to make sure we have an argument here, uh, and sometimes I get pretty aggressive with it, but the one good thing about being aggressive with an argument is it forces an argument. Like, I hate it when people just agree, even when they disagree. So I sort of forced an argument, and there were a lot of people who disagreed with me who made me rethink my position and made me realize that, hey, I didn't have anything, you know, protecting users from having their data pulled from the site entirely and so that's you know that can be easily fixed by storing the data on that person's like the, that individual's data on their own computer you don't want the individual to store everybody's data but they just store their own individual data um, because on a something like Twitter since it's just you know text that's not storing very much so anyways I hope this explained uh, that idea to you guys a little bit more um, what I really hope is some developer gets on this um, again I know I've posted this uh, or, you know, it this is ma it's made the rounds. Let's put it that way. Some people have seen it. Um, the one thing I want to say is I'm not really making this video so much for like the teams of different cryptocurrencies. I'm using it for like outside developers, just people who know how to make these things and want to build their own business. You know, I foresee this more as like a private business type of thing rather than like a developer's project. But um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me, I guess, in the end, who makes it. So, uh, anyways, I hope this video helped explain it. I hope I explained how, you know, it gives you a lot better scaling and a lot better censorship resistance. As of right now, Memo, yeah, they can't eliminate your your uh, posts from the blockchain, but if they want to start censoring you, you know, they can. There's no easy way for you to prove that they've done it if their server's just not doing what you're telling the server to do. 
Um, there's no real easy way to prove it, but if you used a system like this, it would be an easy way to prove it. So, again, I hope this uh, helped to illuminate some of the issues that uh, I have with the current version of Memo and BlockPress, and uh, I hope that some developers out there get to work on trying to fix it. But uh, anyways, there will be more videos coming out soon.